long a day after a looming threat of uh, corona. You still came and sat next to Negroes. It's amazing. Y'all got great faith in that. Y'all done uh, broke the movie theater roll. Y'all got men sitting next to each other. Thank you. I, <laughs> I appreciate you. I, uh, I want to deal with something. God put something uh, in my heart and in my spirit uh, earlier today. Uh, that I really want to uh, unpack uh, for just one moment. And it's talking about uh, men's anger. Uh, men's anger. And uh, I, I want to uh, uh, discuss it for uh, just a bit. And uh, before uh, getting to it, I want to give you just uh, an outline of it. Uh, I want to talk about uh, justified anger. Uh, I want to talk about uh, spiritualized anger, uh, deal with processed anger, and then uh, biblical examples of men uh, who got angry. And then uh, what do we do uh, with that anger uh, that I think is also critical. Uh, outside of our scope, I asked us to uh, move uh, into this room uh, because I want to uh, break up how uh, we ordinarily do just uh, of me talking uh, and uh, really have a moment of dialogue and discussion uh, amongst us as men uh, to deal with uh, process uh, anger and how do we uh, really go forward. Uh, because uh, I believe that uh, especially for men, uh, not many of us really have outlets uh, to deal with uh, where our frustration rests uh, or where to go. Uh, in it. Uh, so you can be uh, angry at home and uh, so you just want to sit down and be quiet and uh, everybody want to talk and, <laughs> and they, they don't even understand. You process different and because uh, I'm angry I don't feel like talking uh, and so now because I'm saved uh, you don't want me to go to the bar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because I'm, I'm trying to be a man of integrity. Uh, you don't want me to go down to the club. Amen. And you don't want me to smoke nothing. <laughs> okay, can we be real in that? I tried to drag y'all out of the church for just, uh, for just one moment. And, uh, and uh, you, you can't even, in good conscience, you can't even cuss good. <laughs> and so the church really doesn't provide anger management outlets for men. Yeah. Uh, so I don't even know where I'm supposed to go uh, or how it is I'm supposed to move forward. Uh, so I want to give you just uh, a couple of things and I want you uh, to go to uh, your note taking uh, section uh, in your phone. Uh, because I'm mindful most of us are not going to say anything, are not going to add anything, but this is a really just something for you to write down, uh, for you to go back to uh, when you get ready to punch drywall. <laughs> when you get ready to leave the house, and you ain't even got a destination in mind, uh, but you just gotta, you just got to go. I want to uh, first define what is uh, anger. Uh, anger, uh, gentlemen, uh, really at its core, anger is a response to pain. Anger is a response uh, to pain. Uh, and anger in many ways is deflected pain. It is uh, the pain from self-protection. So a lot of my anger is uh, I can't believe I let myself become vulnerable. I can't believe I cared as much. I'm mad that it matters. It's anger dealing with betrayal because many times um, in church, all we hear about is uh, men who have cheated and we don't hear no message about men that been cheated on. Amen. 
Finally, and amen. I took a minute, but y'all got that. Yeah. The anger of uh, not being valued, not being appreciated, because uh, as men, you don't want roses. <laughs> you don't want a box of chocolates. You don't need a dress. But every now and again, thank you. <laughs> it will go a long way. So I'm uh, feeling valued and feeling appreciated. I want you to write down, I'm not going to read it tonight, but I want you to I'll write down Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Mark 3, verses 1 through 6. And then Genesis 4, verses 1 through 8. I'm giving you both, both as a scriptural citation. I'm not reading any of them, uh, but all of what it is that I want to talk about uh, is hewn from them. Uh, Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. What did I say? Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. That's good? All right. We, we don't even deal with um, uh, the anger or uh, the frustration of uh, our perceived failed fatherhood. I had a, uh, a colleague who uh, was frustrated uh, because uh, he had uh, worked hard uh, to put his son through private school to 12th grade, give him all the advantages that he, the father, never had. And in the night of graduation, son says he don't want to go to college. He want to be a rapper. And yeah. another father who had uh, worked hard and was with his son all through Pee Wee League, all through middle school, all through JV, all through varsity, got a uh, athletic scholarship, and then his son tells him, I ain't feeling it. Yeah. Which the son has a right to, but nobody processes what the father feels because he's made an emotional investment. There is no place, generally speaking, even in church, on the perceived hit of uh, perceived um, failure in being able to support a family when it's of no fault of my own. So I, I get laid off. And because I was raised, nurtured, developed, invested to be provider and protector, then I'm laid off from a job, not because I was derelict of my responsibility, not because I failed uh, to come in, but they done shut the office down. And now it's flooding in my basement. <laughs> yeah. What, what am I to do with the anger? Let me go a step further when uh, I'm angry with God. Because I can't, uh, can't even understand why my prostate is enlarged. It's no, no safe space, uh, even in church. I'm angry with God, and this isn't even something I know how to pray through because I got uh, erectile dysfunction. You know, I don't want everybody to stretch their right hand to me. <laughs> Is anybody here? Okay. <laughs> These are real men's issues. This is men's Bible study. <laughs> the anger that is uh, resulting when uh, the goalpost keeps getting moved. Yeah. And so I, I think I have reached uh, a level of excellence, a level of accomplishment. And I keep being. the sport I play. So I'm, I'm a provider, I'm doing well, I'm excelling in my field. And 
uh, you keep comparing me to a doctor. 